Let me return to the issue of our troops in Afghanistan. It is a week, well, since last week and the report was released, and we have the traditional political defence hierarchy response, run for cover, bugger the troops, self first, self second and self third. Cover your political and military backsides. I repeat, the comments by the Prime Minister of Australia, the Chief of the Defence Force, Campbell, and the Chief of the Army, Burr, have gone around the world. I repeat again, none of these allegations have been tested, but the Prime Minister calls them brutal truths and apologises to the President of Afghanistan. The Chief of the Defence Force, Campbell, tells us the families in Afghanistan will be compensated. Campbell says they're shameful findings. Burr, the Army Chief, says he was sickened. Well, the arrogance of these starched shirt military so-called leaders knows no limit. A report of only a few hours ago that 10 of the Special Air Service Regiment soldiers have been issued with show cause notices to show why they shouldn't be sacked. Now, fellow Australians, this is the way the defence hierarchy operate. And they presumably think they can get away with standing justice on its head. Remember, no one has been invited to walk up the steps of a court of law, and I suspect it'll be some time before that happens, if it does happen. How do you defend the nation, as I've asked many times this week, by demoralising those charged with the defence responsibility? And let's not beat around the bush. They're not just demoralised, they're questioning the value of life itself. And this is the predicament brought about by our heroic leaders, not a leader's bootlace. No one named, so everyone's guilty. Well, you thought it didn't get worse? It does. The veterans now have to deal with the Australian War Memorial. The War Memorial is where veterans go to reflect on the service and sacrifice of those who have preceded them, to pay homage to those who've made the ultimate sacrifice. The War Memorial, I think we could say, is the veritable soul of the nation, the resting place of the unknown soldier. And here we are in 2020, unproven allegations and politics directing what the military legacy will be. Not brains enough amongst them, whether they're politicians or military brass, to understand one simple thing, investigate before saying anything. Honour the presumption of innocence. And now, before the print is scarcely dry on this Brereton report, we observe the greatest contradiction of all. Gone is the national treasure in charge of the War Memorial, Dr Brendan Nelson, in his place a fellow by the name of Matt Anderson. He spent two years in Afghanistan as a soldier, cut it out, a diplomat. And we now know, before the ink is dry on the report, that he's been, quote, thinking heavily and deeply about how to respond to the Brereton report. And cop this, people will come to the memorial because of the significance of the report and arguably because of the media attention that's been given to the report. They, that's the people, would expect to see it acknowledged and we'll seek to do that. Is that so? I don't think 30,000 Australians served in Afghanistan for that sort of treatment. In the same breath, this new director of the War Memorial, Anderson, said the War Memorial was a place of truth. That being the case, the Brereton report doesn't belong there until truth can be established. But before there's any attempt to do that, every soldier has been maligned, guilty around the world. The Special Air Service Regiment's 2nd Squadron is to be dismantled. This non-leader, Campbell, is apparently going to recommend that the meritorious unit citation to the Special Operations Task Group be revoked. Then you've got the former Defence Chief, Chris Barry. He was the Chief of the Defence Force 20 years ago. He called last week for the exhibits relating to the SAS in Afghanistan to be taken off display until the War Memorial could reflect the findings. How much longer will the Prime Minister remain silent in the face of this assault on the integrity and contribution of thousands of selfless men? Prime Minister, speak up and defend them and correct your original grubby comment that the report contains brutal truths. Is the Brereton report now going to be included in a special hall of shame at the War Memorial? Well, let's go the distance. Build a wall with the names of over 600 veterans who've taken their own lives since the first deployment of troops to Afghanistan in 2001 and increase the size of the wall to monument proportions to one of the thousands more who continue to live with the mental scars of service, scars that have now been cut wide open by the atrocious handling of this report. The poorly timed announcement of the War Memorial's due director, Anderson, in relation to this report is nothing more than an attention-grabbing stunt. Prime Minister, this is on your watch. 
as a result of failed leadership at home and the careless use of language, families of our fallen have been forced to relive their loss and agony without any contact or support from the military or the government, before, during or after. The announcement by the Prime Minister and the Defence Force, I struggle to call them leaders, but they've announced to the world guilt before conviction. Can you imagine a greater indignity, apart from the insult of the early language by our leaders in name only? You now have this fellow Campbell, the Chief of the Defence Force, a general, do you mind? How much gunfire has he seen? This is the bloke lining up people to be sacked before they can get into a court of law. And in the same week, he wants the meritorious unit citation to more than 3,000 Special Forces personnel to be revoked. As one parent said, if the Chief of the Defence Force, Angus Campbell, wants to revoke my son's meritorious unit citation, he can collect it for himself from my son's gravestone. And now the further indignity of contemplating putting the Brereton Report on display in the War Memorial. The institution, we're told, is a place of truth. Well, why not add the Ruby Princess Inquiry Report to the Australian Museum? Or the inquiry into Daniel Andrews' COVID deaths? After all, Andrews and these so-called generals have plenty in common. They know nothing, they just blame others. Australians go to the War Memorial to honour thousands of missions by our men and women who've demonstrated valour and heroism, which would be be beyond most of us. But one final thought for today. Prime Minister Morrison, Defence Minister Reynolds, Chief of the Defence Force Campbell, Chief of the Army Burr, what place will be given in the War Memorial, the place of truth, for Sergeant Hek Matulla? the Afghan soldier who murdered three Australian soldiers in cold blood as they sat playing cards. If you're going to accurately record all aspects of the war, where will the story of Sergeant Heck Matulla be told? I say to you, heartless non-leaders, where is the consideration for the emotional state of those who are already suffering? And how can this be in the best interests of our nation? None of this would, happen, would have happened under Dr Brendan Nelson if he were Liberal Party leader, Defence Minister or boss of the War Memorial, and he has been all three. We need you now, Brendan, more than ever. Prime Minister, the nation is waiting to hear you apologise for your damaging remarks about brutal truths. Sack Campbell and Burr and put Brendan Nelson in charge of restoring the morale of our troops. Believe me, we've rarely been at a lower point than this There is no room for Mother Teresa's in war. If you want young men and women to defend this country, this is no way to go about it. Is the War Memorial now to be an institution to honour allegations? Rarely has the real truth been laid so bare through this shameful episode because the simple truth is we've lost our way. We are leaderless. What do you think? Email me. Alan at skynews.com.au. The text line, you know it, 0414 or you can listen to me live on iHeartRadio. It is Thursday, the 26th of November. Well, the arrogance and defiance of these people is breathtaking. As I've just said, Campbell and his executioners are now lining up some of these soldiers to be sacked. The arrogance is everywhere. As you know, Campbell is the Chief of Defence and is pig-headedly saying now... The decision to write to the Governor-General has been made and will not be reversed. Does he assume that the Governor-General, David Hurley, also a general and a former senior officer in the Australian Army, will do his bidding? There are further reports that the Morrison government set the wheels in motion to strip the citation from Special Forces members who served in Afghanistan five months ago, before Defence had even seen the report. The Prime Minister digs himself into more and more trouble. If this is true, that the government was planning months ago to strip the meritorious unit citation from those who served in Afghanistan, then the Morrison government deserves to be in no end of trouble. This completely undermines the judicial process that hasn't even begun to determine whether any of these allegations can be upheld. Is the government now going to bully the Governor-General to do the bidding of Angus Campbell? Reference has been made today to Private Gregory Scher, who was killed in Afghanistan in 2009, well before the majority of these alleged crimes took place. Private Gregory Michael Scher is one of our nation's war heroes, amongst many others. He served with honour and gave his life. He fought with distinction for the Afghan people. Even if these alleged actions were true, they don't represent over 99% of the Special Forces soldiers. 
Yet the Morrison government and his acolyte Angus Campbell want the 99% to be punished based on an inquiry not bound by the rules of evidence and a report written from evidence that has not been tested before a court. Dr Kay Dane's OAM is the wife of a 42-year-old veteran, a 42-year veteran, but she's much more than that. She is also the president of Army Families, the president of the First Commander Auxiliary, which raises support for servicemen and their families. And she said, I have the privilege of being part of the military family that truly values one another. Dr Kay Danes is eminently qualified. She has spoken at world conferences. She has worked in a number of roles in security, government, social justice and humanitarian service. She's worked in the Middle East, Afghanistan and Southeast Asia. She's addressed US congressional forums on democracy. As I said, the wife of a 42-year veteran, more than qualified to speak for them. And Kay joins us tonight. Kay, thank you for your time. Firstly, what do you make of the latest show cause why you shouldn't be sacked? Well, the the whole dilemma, Alan, has just been astounding. It's it's shameless. Uh, I love that you're calling it for what it is, and you're calling the leadership out because I've never ever in in all my years, and you know, I've been in in the um, defence family for three decades, and I have never seen anything like this. It's just absolutely disgraceful. The CDF needs to be accountable. Um, he's the one in charge. He's the one at the top. He can't just step aside and say that he didn't know anything. No, well, I said that if Morrison wants to do something, he should sack him and Burr. But what demoralisation is at work here and what leadership deficit when the Prime Minister talks about brutal truths and apologises to the President of Afghanistan and, and Campbell tells us families in Afghanistan will be compensated. And Burr, the army chief, said he was sickened. Kay, all these troops are guilty because no one's named. I think the whole manner in which it's been handled has just been appalling. Um, you know, and it goes even further than that. No one's actually consulted the Australian Afghan community. Um, up here in Brisbane, I'm talking with a lot of the leaders in that community. Uh, Rita Anwari is one. And next week we have meetings scheduled with the Australian government, with members of the community and parliament and we're going to talk about the impact that the um the the commander the commander's uh rhetoric has on the afghan community here in australia they're very very concerned they've been getting a lot of hate crimes and mm. a lot of activity at the mosques and the schools and I don't think the CDF has really thought this one through, not to tell all, you the not truth. At all. I mean, how do you defend the nation by demoralising those who are asked to defend it? I mean, to take one example, you've written, I know, about Gregory Michael Scher, beautiful writing, killed in that rocket attack in 2009. I think mm. you were at the site of his grave, weren't you? Yeah, the family, the Scher family, I mean, they're watching tonight, um, Alan, they're just such a beautiful family. They're so compassionate. Felix Scher, Yvonne. Um, Felix is just such a compassionate Felix man. Is the dad, you yeah. can really see where Gregory got his compassion from. He, he comes but, from I mean, a this wonderful is opening, family. This is opening all those wounds, isn't it? I mean, Greg is dead, and Campbell wants to revoke his meritorious unit citation. I mean, it's beyond belief. And, and the talk that Morrison government set the wheels in motion to strip these men of this citation five months ago before Defence had even seen the Brereton report. It's horrifying, the effect on the families, on the serving members, on the, on the veterans community. I've, I've got a phone full of messages from serving and, and veteran um, members they're just absolutely devastated. They're mm. hanging on. And I would appeal to the Prime Minister to consider the situation that the CDF has put these veterans and serving members absolutely. in. Absolutely. This is not the first time that in defence inquiries have actually created significant detriments to professional em um, uh, employment... Paul the employed oh. you know it happens every day yeah. in defense yeah it does look i mean this inquiry was not bound by the rules of evidence the report's been written from evidence that's not been tested in a court and this has just opened up old sores i mean it's not just those who died and gave their lives others returned and they were badly mm -hmm. wounded and this disgraceful abandonment of leadership has just ripped these scars of war wide open again 
I mean, the, the comments uh, by the Prime Minister have gone around yeah. the world. Uh, what message does it send, Alan? You know, we're a country governed by human rights. We signed on to human rights treaties. We tell our soldiers when you go into battle, you follow the rules of engagement. We tell other countries, you must engage in democracy. This is an example of democracy. Well, what is the example that the military commanders are sending to the world now? This puts Australia in a very difficult position. This puts the Prime Minister of our nation in a very compromising and embarrassing position. Absolutely. And I'm going to do something at the War Memorial to honour the 600 who've taken their lives since the first deployment in Afghanistan, the thousands of other soldiers who continue to live with the mental and physical scars of service. I mean, honestly, mm. here are these people apologising to Afghanistan and compensating them. It's just beyond well, belief, I think. They do not understand the hurt that they are inflicting on soldiers, men and women, and their families. I mean, they lost sons. They're sons of Australia. They're our sons too, aren't they, Kay? They absolutely are, and every single person that deployed to Afghanistan should hold their head up high. Their commander is letting them down, in my opinion. They should hold their head up high. They should march with their full set of medals. They should be proud of their services. We are proud of them. We sent them there. Let's honour them by respecting them, by, by standing beside them. Let's get on and support the petition to stop this... Uh, revocation of the meritorious unit citation and the disbanding of our beloved two squadron. Good on you, Kay. Good on you. You're wonderful. Lovely to talk to you. Keep fighting. We'll keep in touch. This ain't over, I can tell you. But thank you for your time and thank you for your commitment. It is very, very much appreciated. Kay Danes.